Shockwaves across the UK after Buckingham Palace announced that King Charles III has been diagnosed with an undisclosed cancer. 75-year-old monarch will step back from public-facing duties as he receives treatment. Queen Camilla and Prince William both expected to step in. Meanwhile, Prince Harry flying from California to meet with his ailing father despite that recent family rift. With more, we are joined by TV host and royal expert Philip Haberlin-Bell. Good to see you. Good to see you both. Thank you for having me again. Uh, we're happy you're here. Let's talk about the sentiment yes. in the UK right now after getting this big news yesterday. I think whenever you hear about someone having cancer, whether it's someone you know or whether it's a major public figure like King Charles, you automatically think about your own health. You automatically think about your own mortality. It's believed that King Charles made it very public that he had cancer to draw attention to it, to have people think about their own health and think about getting checked. He's patron to several cancer charities in the UK. And when he was recently in for prostate surgery on his enlarged prostate, there was a lot of calls to the NHS from men asking about prostate surgery and whether they should look at it. So it's believed that Prince, uh, King Charles came out publicly with it so that it allows people to think about their own health, get checked, get diagnosed. And it's that awful statistic that one in three people will have cancer at some point in their life. So it just allows people to think, wow, maybe that mole that I've had for a little while, I need to get checked mm -hmm. out. To raise awareness. So, yeah. yeah. So you're a, a royal expert watcher. Yes. I'm a political <laughs> expert here in America. Yeah. And see, I see this on the way that, like, if an American official had this, yeah. I see what isn't in the press release. Absolutely. What isn't in the press release is what kind of cancer. Yeah. It doesn't say we expect him to make a full recovery. Yes. And we also get the news that Prince Harry, who's been in this public fight, rushes back to his side. Yes. Should we read into that the way that we would read into that in this country? Or is the Brits just much more private and they they wouldn't include that sort of thing. I think as a nation, the Brits are a little bit more private, but it has a lot to do with the fact that although he's a public figure, the royal family do tend to keep some things to themselves. Like we never fully know what's going on with the royal family. We never fully know what's going on with their health. And there is this question of how much should we know about someone's health? Can they keep that to themselves? Should he be allowed to have some privacy on his own health? And just by saying it creates that awareness, but it, absolutely right it does make you answer ask some questions of what is going on is it worse than we think worse than we think mm -hmm. the message from buckingham palace was very very positive it was they've caught it early we are appreciative of the medical help that uh, king charles has already had mm -hmm. and everything that they've said so far seems to suggest that they have caught it and he will make a full recovery. What do we know about Prince Harry? He flew there from yes. Los Angeles overnight. He spent some time. He's not in the hospital. The king isn't in the hospital. They met at the Clarence House. Will this help bridge that divide? We hope so. I think whenever a family member is unwell or going through something in the way that uh, King Charles is, it definitely makes you go, okay, I'm going to put my priorities in place. This is my father. I would hope that this is going to mend some of those um, broken bonds that they've had. And, and meanwhile, William, uh, yes. who is on the one hand dealing with his wife, who Absolutely. has been in the hospital for weeks with some sort of abdominal condition, which also they're not being very transparent about, and now has his father, he's dealing with that, and his brother back, which also has this weird drama, <laughs> plus three kids that are young as yeah. well, and now he's got to have more public duties. How does he fit into all of this? Yeah, you know, William had stepped back from public duty. He was taking care of Kate, and he was stepped back from all of his public duty all of a sudden king charles is unwell and now he is back in public duty as of tomorrow he has taken over some of king charles um, previous engagements so he's stepping into that role at some point he will be the next king so do you think it, that's going to be much sooner than expected i hope not but you know there is conspiracy theories online uh, we were just talking in the break about nostradamus and he made a prediction a few hundred years ago that the, the king would abdicate in 2024 and all these conspiracy theorists online how much you read into that is one thing but they're all saying that yeah he reads a lot into it. <laughs> no not <laughs> yeah. into Nostradamus I don't believe yeah, into that I just, just I just I, you know yeah. you feel for this guy who yeah. was yeah. basically in waiting for like 60 years absolutely yeah. right? he's and, and he's finally got the job 17 and like months not even two years into yeah, it. 17 months into his reign and this has happened it's you know, you've got to feel for the guy, absolutely. Yeah. He's waited a long time to be king. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
All right, Philip Heverlin Bell, we, we wish thanks the king, God save the king, right? Yes, absolutely. We wish, we wish him a speedy recovery. All right, thanks so much for coming in. Thank well, you.